want to bring Ken Langone into this. Very, very savvy business uh, and in his own right, uh, the fo founder, co-founder of Home Depot, many, many others. Very, very generous on the front with his Langone uh, Medical Center, which has been helping uh, in the coronavirus fight, and that is putting it mildly. Um, Ken, it's always good to have you first on the oil situation here, and this has some sticky details to do with contracts expiring. I get that and all. But uh, for a lot of oil guys, uh, this, this is going to be a severe pinch. What do you make of it? Well, first of all, Neil, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, secondly, let me plead guilty. I'm not anywhere near knowledgeable on oil or the petroleum industry. This, to me, is a pretty simple thing. Tomorrow, somebody's getting delivery of oil, and they got no place to put it. That simple. I mean, this is what we're talking about, an expiration tomorrow. Yeah. So the people that bought the contracts are now going to get delivery. Problem they got is, where do they put it? And the, your previous guest on your show made it clear, you can't build facilities fast enough to do it. So it's a, it's a, look, we're learning one thing, not only about oil, but about the world. We're all interconnected one way or the other. And in a certain sense, that's wonderful, because that means we all need each other. <clears throat> on the other hand, it means also you got to watch what the other guy's doing, because if you don't, it may affect you. Uh, the most important thing right now, Neil, everything that's going to get it going again, is how fast do we get over this pandemic? How fast do we reach a point where people can feel comfortable that they can go out and go to work, and not maybe like they did before, not ride subways where they were packed? I mean, there's going to be things that we're going to do differently going forward, and that's just the way it has to be. I think, I think most importantly of all, the greatest thing is the delivery of quality health care in America, thank God, is phenomenal, and we're proving that right now. You, you look at where we were a month ago and look at where we are today. We have an abundance of ventilators. We have an abundance of masks. This is all, by the way, Neil, thank God, to the private sector in America. Thank, these, these, are the, these are the companies that, that politicians like to beat up on. But guess what? If we didn't have them, Neil, I don't know where America would be today. You look at the masks. You look at the ventilators. You look at the test kits. You can write down a list, but look at the manufacture of, of uh, protective gowns. It, it's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. And, and frankly, we all should feel very good about the fact that we've got these people in our midst. So I, I'm tending to dwell on the positive because I think, first of all, it's more fun. But secondly, it gives you some hope that tomorrow <laughs> is going to be better than today. And it will be. And it will be. By the way. I see you've got pictures up there. What do your doctors hand. tell you? <clears throat> yeah. What, what, do you, doctor, what are your doctors doc and medical experts at the Langone Center? What are they saying? What are they telling you They're about saying the, the progress being the right, made on COVID-19? The numbers are moving in the right direction. They're moving in the right direction. We'd like them to move faster, but the important thing is it appears that the thrust has abated. So in that regard... I think you got to feel good. Now, the hope is over a reasonable period of time, reasonable period of time, the next couple of weeks, we'll see, we'll begin to see the, 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 the dance flow. The tragedy is all these lives we've lost. The, to me, the, the, the message out of that is look at what America is putting itself through because we value every single human being's life, every single one. Some people are going to look back and say, gee, they did all this. 42,000 people or 50,000 people or whatever the number's going to be. Yes, we did it because we value life in America. Life is precious. It's, it's inherent in our values. It's inherent in our ethos. It's inherent in everything we do. And that's good. This is going to be a tough time coming out of this. We're in, it's a tough time now, and it's going to be tough coming out of it. But I have no doubt America well, will Well, Ken, do you worry on that front? Do you worry... I'm sorry, Ken, but do you worry on that front with these polls that show six out of ten Americans fear we could be unwinding these lockdown provisions too soon? They're worried about that. What do you say? I worry, too, Neil. I worry, too. But I, on the other hand, we've got very solid professional people like, like Dr. Fauci, like the, like the status. By the way, computer technology today, AI is going to be of enormous benefit to the decision we make. Why? Because we're going to have more than just guesswork. But you look at Dr. Dr. Burke and Dr. Fauci and all these people at the CDC, and you've got to have some degree of confidence. Look, at some point, we're going to, we're going to go out. We're going to 
try to begin the process of restoring normalcy to our lives, such as normalcy will be defined then. But what are we going to see happening? Number one, we're learning that there are a lot of people that can do their work without going to work. So the first thing I would say is, for those companies, you decide which people in your organization can stay home, and you say to them, all right, on the first wave, you stay home. You can do what you have to do. People that are essential to their presence being where they work, then you're going to make provisions. There's going to be masks. There's going to be tests. There's going to be degrees of separation. But it'll work. Look, every time this great nation has been confronted with a challenge, we've whipped it. We've whipped it. This will be no exception. And I, I can tell you right now what's going on at our place at NYU Langone. It is the most one. And uh, by the way, we're no exception. Uh, New York Presbyterian, Northwell, Montefiore, Mount Sinai, all of us, all of us, where we are showing the world just how good we are and how much we care. And I think, Neil, at the end of the day, we're going to look back and say, thank God we have America and thank God we're American. I am very optimistic. I don't like what we're going through. I wish we weren't going through it, but here we are. And, and we have to deal with it, and we are dealing with it. I mean, just look, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was going nuts with terror that we weren't going to have masks. And boy, oh boy, did the American ministry crank right. up and we've got masks. We weren't going to have ventilators. The governor of New York State said he was afraid he was going to be short 40,000 ventilators. New York State's now shipping ventilators, I think, to Vermont or Massachusetts, or one of the New England states. The point is, Look at what we've done in two and a half short weeks. And that didn't just happen. That was human effort, soundly applied, managed well, and here we are. So, look, keep the faith, have patience, and understand that you're going to make concessions that you have to make now based on what happened. And you know, it's so different, Neil. Look at 9-11. What happened after 9-11? All of a sudden, you're taking your shoes off and you go to a, on an airplane, you're walking through uh, a metal right. detectors. Right. No, uh, you, there was a one building. I remember before 9-11, I could go into any building in New York, go into the elevator and go wherever I wanted. Today, every building in New York, every single building in New York, you're obligated to, to uh, show your identification. We adjusted to it, and we'll adjust to this. But don't give up on America. We are, we are and we always will be the greatest nation on Earth. I just wish, Neil, frankly... And I said this last week, and I'll say, I wish the media could make a little bit more effort to show us some wonderful heroic stories by the, the people that drive ambulances, the people that drive trucks. If you recall, Mayor de Blasio was talking about rationing of food in New York. didn't happen. Why? Because industry cranked up, truck drivers showed up, we got the goods to where they are, and here we are. So, so let's build on what made us. No, you're right about that. But let me ask you, though, on that on, on that point, Ken, and you mentioned yeah. Anthony Fauci a little earlier, and he had said yeah. that there is really no recovery if the virus isn't under control. Now, he didn't specify what exactly he would look at, what barometers he would be using to describe under control. Some well, say I, a decline in new cases uh, and, and, and more drug testing available. What, what, what do, do you yeah. hear from your own folks and elsewhere? What would you like to see? I'll tell you what we'd like to see. We'd like to see that if the cases keep coming, they're within management level. And that's what's exactly going to happen. Two weeks ago, we were terrified we were going to be swamped. We were going to be drowned with all these cases. Well, guess what? We're at a point now where we're starting to see uh, discharges equal admits. And that's the name of it. That, to me, is the most important thing of all. Uh, by the way, last night, they had the number of deaths at a higher number. That Your screen shows 40,702. Last night it was 41,000 and something. I don't know which number is right. The point is we've had a dramatic slowing up. And, and so, so, Neil, the name of the game is to make sure the system can manage the inflow, which is dictated by your availability of beds. I can tell you right now, we now have available beds at NYU. We now have available beds in ICU. We have available beds in acute care. And by the way, Neil, a lot of people are going home. So, so look, but I'm a perennial optimist. You know, give, give me a picture, and I'm going to try and find something in that picture that makes me feel good. Now, maybe, maybe I'm Pollyanna. Maybe I'm dreaming. All those things. I could well be at 84, you know, things start to happen to your mind. 
I hope it hasn't yet happened yet, but maybe it <laughs> is. The, the, the point is, Neil, look at how far we've come in 30 short days. We're going to get back. You're right. We're going to have to make it. And by the way, we're all going to make sacrifices, all of us. I don't, I don't want to get specific, but there's a million different things we're going to have to do differently, including how do we get back some semblance of balance in the, government, in the, in the federal financial situation. We can't keep printing paper like this without some consequence, and the consequence has to be a combination of throttling back and perhaps, perhaps adjusting, uh, raising taxes. That may be in the picture. I don't know. I'm, I'm not smart enough to know that. All I'm saying is don't give up on America. We are the greatest country on earth. We always will be. We're at our very best. We're at our very best when we have our backs to the wall. What else but when you I talk you, about friend? all the spending that's been going on, <clears throat> no, 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 do you, but, but when you talk about all the spending that's been going on and Republicans and Democrats have been doing it um, to just try to get us out of this, it's trillions of dollars. You talked about the idea that has to be addressed down the road, but you're open to higher taxes to do it. That might be unavoidable, right? Yes, absolutely. Look, let me give you a for instance. Give me an easy one. What the hell am I doing getting Social Security every month? That's, this, is, this is wrong. Take it away from me. They haven't got the guts to do it. Well, maybe this will give them the courage to say they've got to have a hard look at entitlements and ask the question, who should have it and who shouldn't? There's a big difference in America today than what it was in the 30s when Social Security came in. It's changed. It's changed dramatically. And we need a change with it. So there's a good example. I can go on down the list of all the th A lot of these, frankly, a lot of these tax benefits that different organizations get, I'm not talking about charities, I'm talking about uh, investment operations. We have to have a hard look and say, hey, wait a minute, this is not right. It's wrong anyway, but right now it's a good way to start getting out of problem and do two things at one time. Fix something that shouldn't be and also help something that needs to be fixed. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through it fine. All right. But, but it's, it's going to be with pain. All right. And it's going to be with sacrifice on all of our parts. And thank God, thank God we have the capacity to make those sacrifices. And more importantly, thank God we live in a country where eventually we sort things out. My only thought would be, Neil, please, for the media, start writing some nice stories. Start writing some stories about people feeling good about what they're seeing. Uh, every day I'm hearing stories about our doctors and our nurses and our patient care technicians and our, and our culinary people and our building services people and the bus drivers and the truck drivers and the people on the farms and the people in the factories. Boy, oh, boy, thank God. We've got a lot of reasons to say thank God. <clears throat> well, That's my well, pitch. Uh, you know, I didn't know you were, uh, I didn't know, Ken, that you were 84. Uh, I thought you were much older than that. Well, but, I mean. Guess what? Uh, guess what? I'm, I'm 84, yeah. and, and I need more sleep, and I don't have the energy level I used to have. I'm not pretty good, <laughs> but it ain't what it was. Neil, thanks for having me on well, the show. Good luck coming out of your shell. Good luck coming out of your shell, my friend. Ken Lingo, he's working, the best I'll of the best. The uh, Do me a favor. Find some great stories to share with you. <laughs> It'll help. Take care. We do. Every single show. And then in America Together, and we feature that, and some remarkable people of all stripes uh, trying to get through this and, and providing a great example, as are you. Ken Lingo, thank you very, very much.